Hey everyone, it's John Isaias from The Automator, and uh, we're just continuing on in our amazement with ChatGPT3. So we, we thought we're going to do like a weekly video where we discuss how we've used it that week, how it's improved our business, how we're using it for both auto hotkey and for running our business and various things. So we got a really great list of things we're just going to discuss here, and then we're going to show you near the end some great resources that you can get to learn a little more about how to use it. Um, and it's a very special one with VS Code, which I think you'll enjoy. Yeah, that's right. And right now we we have been playing with it in different various forms, um, not only for coding, but also things outside of it. For example, you used it to create uh, an FAQ page really quickly. You just say like, hey, yeah. what are the most common questions for uh, this one thing, and it, it just went ahead and gave you a list of it, right? Yeah. So I said for auto hotkey, give me the FAQs, the frequently asked questions. Okay. Yeah. And it spit out about five of them, and then I just kept typing continue, right? And it would and it, it kept, it continue. You know, okay. Yeah. Do more. And then the really cool thing, because in Google, if you create a schema file, it'll do a better job indexing and showing people, right? So I said, okay, now take that. Actually, what I ended up doing was I took the results, put it into Word to pretty it up first, and then I converted the Word to HTML. And then I said, hey, take this HTML file I created, and I shoved it back into ChatGPT and said, create a schema file from this. From that. <laughs> yeah, and it cranked it out. And then both of us were like, well, we know what these are, but we've never actually added them to where, where do I put page. them, right? Yeah, so we just asked ChatGPT, and it told us. And we're like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. And actually, for for I have been playing with it for for one of my scripts. So one of the things that stopped me from continuing with my script was, hey, I have to create a database, and uh, that database will need some tables and some fields. And I didn't want to think about it, so I have been busy with other stuff. And then I said, like, hey, let me tell ChatGPT what I'm what my intention is. And told it replied back with the list of fields that I could use to start. Like I just told it, "Hey, I need a, a program. I'm, I'm creating a program that would be used to create hotkeys and hot strings to, and launch programs. Um, so the user will have a GUI. Tell me which fields I should save for something like that. That so I gave it the end goal, and then I told it which fields would you use on a database for that, and it gave me uh, a few of them that I had already thought about. But then it gave me a few more that I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Like, okay, hold yeah. on, that, that's that's good to know, right? Yeah. So it was good. Well, it's, it's a good point of, you know, humans, even when you're an expert, we know our stuff. However, we're not great at creating like an entire list of all the things, right? It's easy to forget one or two things when we're, we're brainstorming, right? Because it's just not in front of you and you're not necessarily trying to write them all out. And that's where computers are amazing, Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a great instance. Uh, I've been using it for, you know, all of our videos and even emails stuff and say, hey, make, you know, I'll write the topic and I say, make this headline a little jazzier, make it a little more clickbaity, <laughs> kind of more interesting. Yeah. So if you want to write a, a letter to a girl you like, you know, you're uh, like, hey, make <laughs> me sound more interesting. And it, it's amazing what a good job it does. Uh, it, it makes yeah, it much yeah. more intriguing. That is right. Um, in general, I think uh, I saw one example of somebody saying, like, write a text to a friend of mine uh, in, in a very casual tone mm -hmm. and tell him that his girlfriend cannot come to our outing. <laughs> and, and the chat GPT wrote something and it was like, yeah, no plus ones allowed or something like that. And it was really funny because it, I, I wouldn't have expected the computer to come up with something so uh, uh, casual how right. it did. And that it didn't sound like like uh, rude when it told right. it not to bring the girlfriend. It was very nice, actually. It's very impressive when it comes to like the tone, like when you tell yes. it, to, you know, at the level, right at the twelfth grade level or whatever, you know, like that level, yeah. and that tone of aggressiveness or fun or you know, professional or whatever, and it does a really, really good job. Yeah. Um, yeah. When we were on a client call, uh, and one of the things he was doing was he was inserting images into PowerPoint. And I went through and I have, I had, I think five or six scripts using Calm with PowerPoint, but I didn't have a specific example of that. And so I just went to chat GPT and said, so like, you know, in give me auto hotkey code for using a Calm object in PowerPoint and inserting a picture. And it straight up wrote some really, really good code for, for doing just that. It was really okay. impressive. And again, it, it depends exactly on which language you're yeah. Speaking because uh, it doesn't know a lot about a hotkey itself, but it knows other languages really well. So, for example, 
I was uh, dealing with some, I was helping my brother with an Excel file and he was getting some information out of a table and so on. And we had some formulas that were a little bit complex. And then what he required was something that should have been done with Power Query. I knew that, so we started doing the Power Query, but there was this part where that particular formula that we had already working had to be rewritten in Power Query. And I don't know that. So I, I just said, hey, let's pass that to, to ChatGPT. And I think he did that. He put it in, in ChatGPT. And the freaking thing converted to Power Query. Like, he didn't have to modify it. He copy pasted it and it was working. And it was like, okay, that's insane. You know, like, okay. Yeah. And uh, actually, the beginning of the New Year's Eve party where we were streaming, we started having some fun with it, asking it to create auto hockey drinking games and stuff. And it was really yeah. fun and interesting, the stuff it was coming up with. Yeah. Actually, we, we got a list of about like 10 games or something like that out of those. And this is the interesting thing. After I get the list, then I tell it, okay, explain this one in particular or expand that one or give me a list of uh, items that I could use with that one. And so so not only gave me the list, but it also helped me create something that I could use for the game itself. So it was, right. uh, <laughs> I, it is, it does most of the work for you. You just have to tell it what to do right. so and, and and some people say hey why are you guys speaking about chat gpt that much but i'm going to tell you something um first of all i do understand that this is going to be the future right so oh, yeah. it, no it, doubt we need to at least get a hold of what the heck is going on but not only that why i find it so impressive and why i think it's a good thing to at least have a very good foothold on is because it releases you from having to learn something that allows you to focus on what you're trying to actually do. I have no idea of Power Query. If I wanted to do what that yeah. thing did, I would have to spend a few hours watching YouTube videos and do this. I'm wasting my time, which I could have used for something more productive or a personal thing. But if I tell chat gpt to do that for me right or at least point me in the right direction i have saved a lot of time so if you want to know why it's important is because i think your time is valuable right that, is. that's that's why we are automating here so we're automating to save right. time right so chat gpt is something that is going to save you a ton of time a ton of time yeah yeah, one, so one, I was working on some some stuff in SBSS, it's a statistical language, and I used to know it, I still know it really well, but it was, I was getting into the weeds of trying to split an email address on the at side and just get the the beginning part to the left of it, and it had been a while, so I just said, let me ask ChatGPT, and I said, just, you know, give me SBSS syntax that will give me everything to the left of an at sign in a string, and it gave me the exact perfect code, and I was like, man, that you know, it would have taken longer to, for you to go back yeah. and try yeah. to remember or right. try, you know, trial and error when yep. this thing can give you that in a few seconds. That's amazing. So yep. now um, we did uh, some of the things that you shared, some resources. I, I was actually quite impressed by uh, one of them because you were talking about a chat GPT prompt book. Right, uh, which when I saw it, I was like, "Well, this is not a book," but but in general, it is it is a good starting point. Um, I don't know if you want me to show that yeah, one. Yeah, well, let's let's share. Let's show. We'll we'll put the URL. We'll give you one URL here at the end to go and have links to the, some of these resources. Right, um, like. but in general, this it is a slideshow more than anything, and right. this particular file contains uh, not only the idea behind what he's doing right so about you know basic prompts and so on so he goes ahead and details gives you a little bit of information about it but here's the meat of the thing is that it gives you the prompt well let me show you this one here this is the prompt in general but he has some explanations about right. what he was thinking or what he's expecting and, sh and other stuff and an example of what the ai uh, uh returned back which is great you can see a few interesting i think it was in this in this same book that i saw what i told you about the friend or something it was yeah right yeah so it was it was something about i was like yeah i know that i read it somewhere i didn't remember where but basically i went through I'll, yeah i'll try to remember to link to it also i went through and took each one of these prompts and put them into a text file 
because oh, it, right. it's just a little annoying that you know you can't easily grab these so it just makes it a little simpler yeah so this was a very good uh resource and if you if you look at the next section which is advanced prompts you'll be surprised about things that it can do so <laughs> this is this is uh i found it very interesting well, and again, this is why we're making these videos too. It's just to help stimulate to make you think about what you can ask it. Because when right. I know for you and I, when we first started doing this, we were doing very basic stuff, and and it's taken us. And even after a couple of weeks, we're still just touch scratching the surface of what you can ask it. Most of the times, as with everything in life, if you do not have examples of something, you might never come up with it in the first place. Which is weird because it's a lot of things that are very simple that you say, huh, why I didn't think of that before? Well, because right. you've never seen anybody doing that. So it is difficult to come up with something by your own sometimes. So just having those examples might trigger, oh, I could use it for this one thing, you know? And yeah. that's it, basically what we're trying to do. For most people, you know, in order to understand and really grasp an idea, it's got to be close enough for you to relate to, right? And that's yeah. why we come up with different ideas here to help sometimes trigger that for you right and for us too of just like a wow let's let's jump into the next one which i think is was really cool right the list of five uh, 50 uh, clever prompts this is another resource that you linked which is great <laughs> this was like converting movie titles to emoji right right <laughs> right and stuff like that um but what you would notice here is that each of these uh on the left are links to the to articles that were written regarding it and you could just go ahead and click on them and get the whole thing uh, but in general again just take it if you want to read the articles go for it but usually it's more about seeing the idea right so you just oh ai brainstorming hey tweet generation oh you know you you might get good ideas of what you can try with the ai tells you who created it, the type, what it is. I have some notes on it as well. I, I didn't know if, ah, oh, here it is. If the prompt was included, they will mark it as a check mark. So if you go to the... To the yeah, tender openers, uh, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> or if, it, if the prompt is not there, so it's just the idea of what you can do with it, then it would mark it. I think that's the only, well, two of them. Are the only ones that are not included but again this is a very good resource so whenever you have a little bit of time if you don't have anything to do i definitely uh, recommend just playing a little bit with it because it gives you <laughs> very good yeah there was one other one which actually i didn't put on the list as ace but um i i played with it and i'll make sure i put it into the the link that we give you is there is a chrome extension that you can add, it adds a checkbox to tell ChatGPT to search the web, which I tried it and it really, it seemed to change the responses a lot. So I turned it off, um, but it was interesting because we, we all know it, it hasn't been connected to the web since the end of 2021. Is that right? I think. Yeah, that was like from yeah. 2020 or 2021. That was the, so it's giving it, it, it got information from the internet up to that point, but it's not yeah. really connected to the internet. Right. Well, in this, and with this Chrome extension, you turn it on. And from what I read, it was supposed to allow it to connect to the internet, which I don't fully believe is true. So I was a little confused, but I'll throw it in there just, just cause it's another thing you might want to play with. Yeah. But let's jump to the, uh, the really, really amazing one. Well, what we noticed is that there is an extension now that, well, there are many extensions now yeah. in which you can integrate ChatGPT with uh, VS Code, which uh, most of you probably are aware of, but I don't know if you have played with. Um, we decided to grab one of those extensions. Uh, so let me just uh, open here the extensions for a second. Of course, if you just look for chat GPT, what you're going to get is a bunch of uh, uh, extensions that you could test and try. Now, I grabbed one from this guy, Tim Chemical or whatever that is. Now, he had two extensions. One of them is based on the official OpenAI API. And the other one is based off of an unofficial chat GPT API. So 
I selected the official one. This is the one, but for use this one for you to use it, you need to have an API uh, code that you have to configure on the extension. So basically, you you would you need, need your to token. right you, and token. Yeah, exactly. Now there's a lot of the other extensions that most of them just give you uh, kind of like a place where you can put a prompt and you get an answer. But some of them were very interesting. Like for example, explain this code. So this one, <laughs> this is the only thing you do. You just select some code and you just tell it, explain it to me. And it was really good at it. And the other one was the snippets. So this one, <laughs> I was laughing a lot because I said, I don't like creating uh, VS Code snippets because they are compared to other tools, really annoying to create because there are JSON things that you have to escape the new line characters or you have to use some arrays to create new lines. It was really annoying. But this thing, you can select some code and say, create a snippet from this. And it would just go ahead and create the snippet for you, which was really, I, I actually liked it a lot. And it just goes ahead and builds the whole thing for you, which again, it is using chat GPT for doing that. But beside that, all the others were just basically what I'm going to show you now, which if you click on the extension panel here, you can you have a prompt here and then it would answer whatever and you could answer anything you know say hi whatever it is it just goes ahead and gets the prompt from chat gpt great but the truly interesting part comes into that once you select some text in the editor now when you right click you have a few options down here interestingly enough try to optimize try to find problems refactor explain or write documentation. I like these two, the explain and write documentations because and those two have been really good at yeah. uh, what they do. So I just select some text and say, explain what that is doing. And usually it's a very, very good explanation or very simple uh, explanation that, you know, um, uh, you know, the user can enter a reminder note and time it in minutes. Okay, good. I can tell exactly what it's trying to do. But the one that I want to be able to use more, I don't know if with out of hot key I can do this, but with other languages would be great, is to optimize code. Sometimes it might tell you, hey, there's nothing to well, optimize. I was going to say an important point is that the, what we have in front of us isn't stuff that we wrote. And the reason right. why was we tried running this optimize on our right. code, especially as Ace code, but it's like, hey, your code's perfect, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> it's, so it's it can't optimize. It so we, we said, have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go find some, you know, not so perfect code and let's see if <laughs> it can identify stuff. And sure enough, it right. you know, came back. The, 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 I was like, every time I wanted to show an example and every time we did it, like, there's nothing to optimize. There's nothing. But here it said like, hey, the code looks well optimized. However, there are small improvements that could be done. Instead of multiplying user input by 60,000, it would be better to set a timer command, wow. for example. Wow, that's a, that's a very interesting one. That is. So, so we actually have of, a video like, on, on that. Exactly yeah. that, right? So, yeah. we, we, <laughs> right. so instead of, of doing that, right? yeah. <laughs> kind of. So actually, is this, um, so I mean, I don't know if you will walk through the rest here. I think it's pretty cool. What I was going to say is let's freehand delete some of the stuff, mm -hmm. write two, I don't know if you want to use even a go sub, write two things that should have been a function, right? Like that by changing a parameter, you know, and use it like a sleep command or something, right? That basically it really should have been a function with a parameter that would allow you to call it once, but, you know, write the code where it does it twice. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So let me, let me do this. It doesn't have to be a go sub though, right? No, I'm I understand. Just saying you can so, have, okay, let's. And then you say go sub, run this again. So I'm running it twice is what you're saying, right? No, not, 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 no. I want to make it dumber at first. Okay. So, and I shouldn't have said go subs, but it's just, to me, um, functions and go subs are highly related to that. You can pass a parameter in a, in a function. Right. right. But what but, I'm saying is like, uh -huh. have some code where it does a sleep and a message box. Okay. So message box. True. Yeah. And then a sleep. Sleep. 
one thousand. Yeah, then and then message another message box. box. True. Well, I'd even say false, right? Because that okay. would be the. Okay. Hopefully, it would actually identify that's a parameter that changes, mm -hmm. right? Okay, and then um, message box. Uh, or my name. Right. Yeah. Right. And then sleep. 1000. Yeah. Now, now if I'm, I grab this, right. I optimize the uh, let, let's see with I, I would right. think it would go with a with a loop first. I would think it would try a loop first, but as there's something changing on each time, it should go with a function, which is your point, right? Right. Right. Ah, again, there's a loop. Ah. For x in this uh -huh. it would try the message box on the sleep. This looks like Python code though. It does. Yeah. Right. So this is Python code. So yep. it might not really work that easily, well, but I yeah. would say auto hotkey code. Let me, yeah, auto. We both know at some point auto hotkey will really be in there better, right? Like it's just right. a matter of time. Um, I think one one addition that this uh, guy could make this is to try to uh, find out what the language right. mode is right. and then go ahead and um, uh, insert that into the prompt. Now, as I mentioned, I I... I assumed that it was going to go through the a loop field right. here but the only problem here is that it's not doing exactly right. what we had right right so uh it tried but i think that it, it hit a limit because it only used 457 tokens there's something very important whenever you're using your your token um every time you make a call to the chat gpt you're going to be charged for it mm -hmm. so how the amount of tokens that are being used is important so Isaiah is saying, donate now to us. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so in general, do, uh, do me a favor. Try yeah. this just just because it's stupid, but I can kind of see how it's closer to the most normal languages, right? Throw in, convert each one, each message box to an expression. So put in the percent sign with the quotes. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious if it picks up on. Um, so you want to put put quotes around the things to the, the right. Words. Okay. Yeah. If it would pick up. So I, the I'm, fact that that would be a right. right. Okay, I think again, what I have seen it doing is that it was tried to do use the loop, and for each a index, it would use an if else statement. Is mm -hmm. probably what it's going to try to do. So let me see if let me uh, optimize it. This time it should and, detect that this is. Uh, and then go uh, ahead and copy that. Maybe work on it until unless it takes. All right, it's done. Mm -hmm. Let me see what it did. Already optimized. That's not optimized, my friend. Yeah. Right. But I think it is because of auto hot. It is because auto hot key yeah. code. It doesn't know how to optimize it right. though. Right. Right. So, but in any case, again, uh, this is amazing. The fact that now I'm going to have um, a few other uh, options to my code and. So long as this is getting a little bit more and more integrated with BS code, right. that means right. that it's going to be great because I'm going to be coding and it, I could probably just hit a, a hotkey or right click and say, complete this function and it would just go well, ahead and do it for me. I, honestly, I would say, which we talked about a while ago, you could just start writing uh, pseudocode at the top and then just tell it. Go ahead and highlight, highlight the first one, you know, like e let's say each one is a sentence, right? Or, or, or a paragraph. Go implement, go create this code. Okay, now right. go create the next one because that's, I think it's probably smart to break it down individually. Yes, I would, I would definitely, yeah. I would definitely myself do that. So, yeah. because if you give it a lot of things, it would try to create, create a very broad solution and it would create very, a, a lot of additional functions that you probably don't need. So, if I just give it a very specific prompt, it would try to just do that one. So, yeah, and in, in one of the hero calls, we were talking about this. And the other thing is, right now, because it doesn't necessarily really know auto hotkey, it's probably better if you like the example I said earlier about using a com object. It's probably better not to even mention auto hotkey and say use a com object with PowerPoint to insert a picture, and then we get the response and then adapt that to how we would use a com object without a hotkey because it's it's going to be very similar to compared to most yes, other languages, right? That is for sure. But that it is probably sure. knows the com object, you know, really well enough. Well enough. Yeah. Yes, I right. would agree with that. So think about what you're asking it to do and can you generalize it to not be on a hotkey focused in doing it and then adapt it, you know, at least for now, right? Like for the next, who knows, six months or whatever.
I think it usually does a very good job of translating stuff into auto hotkey too. So after you get the original, good point. right? Uh, after you get the right. original answer, which right. m- might be the yeah. correct answer, then you go ahead and say convert that to auto hotkey code, and it usually yeah. does a very good job at that too. So let's 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 bring this over to a, a something to to think about. It's the in essence what you're saying also is, hey, instead of saying write this auto hotkey code in Spanish for me. You're saying, you know, write this in the language you know, and now, hey, take that and translate it into English and translate it to Spanish. Because, right? because yeah. the problem is that it might not know the right solution in our hotkey, but it knows right. the right solution in a different language. Right. So right. I could get the right yeah. solution first, right. and after I get that, then go ahead yeah. and get it into our hotkey code. No, I, I think that's a really good point of... Yeah. Uh, it's better to let it solve it first and then convert it rather try to do both at the same time right like right, exactly. so yeah that's interesting okay so uh you know chime in below if you want to know something specific about using chat gpt right now it's still free um who knows when they're going to turn that off uh, i did see some other news that they're expecting what do you remember i think it's the next 20 days they're they're thinking microsoft might incorporate it into the bing search oh tool. yeah i saw that like that's pretty wild like google I, you know, I mean, I knew, I saw a lot of people saying Google must be really sweating bullets. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure they are, but you know, it's going to be a while. And then I saw a thing saying 20 days and I'm like, holy hell. But not, not only that, my question would be like, how long has Google been using the chat GPT thing? Because right. bigger right. companies have access to those kind sure. of tools before yeah. you even think yeah. about it. So, yeah, I also, I don't think I mentioned that in the chat, but they're also talking about it's not just going to be on Bing. It's going to be on like the PowerPoint image search that we just did the other day, or even the what? What's the stupid uh, Microsoft one built into Windows? Cop- Cop- Copernicus? No. Oh, what? No, I don't know. I, Starts I don't see. know. It's the one. You know, it's the oh, Cortana. Cortana. <laughs> Cortana. Yes. The thing. Yeah. Right. I, I, so it'll I be tied in with that so as much, well. Yeah. yeah everyone. Did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, I don't but know why. this, yeah, this it is. Uh, it's amazing. If you're not using it, get on it, man. Check Again, it out. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Oh, like the video if you learned something. It really helps us out. Get a lot more views. Cheers. Yeah.